I think you're amazing. You are too, Henry. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, Perry, you are awesome. <laughs> thank you, and I appreciate you what you're doing too, buddy. Well, thank you. Because if you allow the world to define you, if you allow friends to define you, if you allow your spouse to define you or anybody to define you outside of how God sees you, that does open the door to rejection. God bless you. I, and I hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank you, Brother Thank Henry. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you too. Thank you for having us. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so grateful that you've taken this opportunity to watch. We have an amazing show for you today. I'm here with my precious friend, Lionel Sneed. Uh, he's a great friend of mine, and I just wanted to uh, let everyone know publicly how much I value, appreciate this man for uh, pushing me uh, into my purpose, adding value to my life. He's kind of a behind-the-scenes type of guy because I I rarely ever talk about him, but uh, but the guy that you see, the man that you see now, is someone who uh, has encouraged me, who has told me, uh, in spite of my feeling hopelessness and um, feeling like I couldn't do it, uh, he was the man that told me, Henry, you were made for this moment. And there's rarely ever been a time where he hasn't prophetically spoke some over my life, what was in regards to my personal life, my show, something that he foresaw that was about to happen that hasn't come to pass. Um, so I appreciate you so much for your uh, your friendship, and thank you for being on the show today. Likewise, Henry, man, that's a that's a awesome introduction. Uh, yeah, I didn't even write it on paper. It came from my heart. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. He tried to make me cry over it, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I do. I do really appreciate you. Yeah. Um, well, well, look, man. Let's see, um, the feelings mutual. You know, it's um, it's not one sided. Man. You, you've uh, you've done a lot of things for me as well. You've um, impacted my life as well. You, you've inspired me to hope. You've and you really helped me to understand what perseverance, uh, perseverance and faith is all about yeah you know so, so you you really showed me that too so like i said it's not one-sided man it's, well it's a two-way street here <laughs> yeah well i i appreciate it so much and um uh, i asked um uh him what he would like to talk about <clears throat> and he just referred to the grace of god and earlier when i was kind of cleaning around my house i was thinking i was like i don't know why it hit me but the word grace unlimited just mm -hmm. hit me all of a sudden. I was like, what is grace unlimited? And when we think of something that's unlimited, it means it's without limitations, um, without borders, so to speak. And I, and I just think that's amazing. I would That's why I wanted to come on here and talk to you about that. I thought that would be a very interesting subject uh, to talk about, you know, God's grace. What does that mean to you? What does that look like to you? And uh, I guess I'll start out with a scripture that I was looking at earlier. And um, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I believe this is Paul speaking. And his grace towards me was not in vain. Uh, he proceeds to say that on the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me you know that that first part there lionel really touched my heart like because of the grace of god i am what i am so if you were to ask me when i think of the grace of god i think god's grace empowers me uh to live authentically when i think of grace um uh, i feel like People's grace can be very limited. Uh, some people can be very impatient with you, and um, some people don't know how to love you. But I think when it comes to God's grace, is a little bit different. So, can you tell me 
uh, your perspective on grace unlimited or, or overall the grace of God and um and how how have you made that applicable uh to your life? What does grace look like to you? What is grace? Well, um I think uh one of the things that I love about Paul and when he speaks about grace, Paul always had the ability to put things in the proper perspective. Mm -hmm. And by um, uh, what I mean by Paul having the ability to put things in a proper perspective is that he always understood and knew uh, his role when it came to grace, his abilities when it came to grace. You know, he was saying that, that, okay, me as a human, I'm able to do certain things, but I'm able to go above and beyond because of God's grace, mm -hmm. not because of his abilities, you know. And with, with him putting things in that perspective, what it did is that it put the, um, well, um, I guess you could look at it uh, uh, in this way. It, it took the pressure off of him, mm -hmm. him trying to perform. And what it did, it helped him focus on relying on God and his grace and the ability of his Holy Spirit that lives within you to help you to go above and beyond and to do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And when I look at that and I apply that to my life, I've been able to see that, that understanding and living a life of grace allows you to go above and beyond whatever natural abilities that you have. Um, uh, case in point, you know, where, where you can see where, uh, where scripture says that for God takes the foolish things, Mm -hmm. You know, or the simple things. And he takes those things and he uh, makes those things go above and beyond or, or to where you would look at something like that and say, well, how can this normal, regular person do something like that? Yeah. And it's just simply because the power of God and because of grace, um, you know, and I think about my life personally, man, there's there's no way that I would be here right now today if it wasn't for the grace of God. I can look back to, you know, when I was young and foolish <laughs> and just some of the things that I would put myself in by being young and foolish, but only by the grace of God that he was able to be in there and work situations to where I came out without being harmed, you know, or, or maybe how I acted towards somebody when by the grace of God, they didn't have any ill feelings towards me or lasting ill feelings, but was able to forgive me. Yeah, you know, so that's powerful. Yeah, and, and you know, I was thinking about something else too. Some things, um, you know, that God does in your life is it, is beyond comprehension and even explanation. It's like, um, it's like you know, it's something bigger than you. Are you you reference something about, you know, little old me? You know, like who am I? You know. You know, even as it relates to my show, and you, we've been friends going on seven years almost. Like you've seen the ups and downs, and I'll call you, "Hey, such and such is coming on." And, so, and then when I look at, when I look at my own life. I'm like, "What is this force that's pushing this?" And I didn't know what it was at at first. Um, and I said, "Oh, maybe this is maybe this is the grace that you're talking about tonight. It's a force." that's pushing us into our greater purpose and who we're mm -hmm. designed to be, even though I may feel inadequate at times. Um, I do feel like re re referring back to Paul again, where he says, my grace is sufficient. That word sufficient means um, adequate. Right. It means enough. So there's times where I feel like, Spiritually, I'm, I'm running empty, and it's like, what do I depend on? You know, I've had people tell me, oh, don't don't give yourself, you know, give yourself credit, Henry. I've talked to you about this. You know, you've done mm -hmm. all the work. You've done, And I understand that, yes, it is me doing all the work, but I have to acknowledge God in the sense that it's something greater and bigger that's working behind the scenes, even if I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So has there ever been a time in your life where you may have been running on empty, you know, um, maybe you feel like um, God's grace wasn't sufficient in your life when 
when all along, you know, he was working behind the scenes. Have there ever been times in your life, Lionel, where you have, um, <clears throat> where you've asked, where you where you've went to God, and you're like, uh, is your grace really there? Is it is it really enough? Well, um, that takes place every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, every day that takes place, you know. But I can think about just, um, oh gosh, um, I okay. There's there's a couple things that really uh, come to mind. Um, wondering if I was enough to be a good husband a good father, uh, um, enough to um, be a Christian. You know, those, those things always came into play. And what I learned from that once I learned about grace is that when you are always trying to do something on your own effort, it's never enough. Mm, God, it's wow. never enough. Yeah. yeah, it's never enough based upon the own standards that we impose upon ourselves. Uh, and and it's just like 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 whenever you don't really understand God's grace, then you say things like uh, you 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 focus more on how much you love God yeah. instead of how God loves you. Yeah, that's when you're not really understanding grace, and you're also in a posture where you're trying to prove yourself worth. And when I uh, when I step back and, and realize that, that God has already given me the grace to be a godly husband, a godly father, you know, to be the Christian that he's already mapped out and died on the cross for me to be. All these things that I was trying to, uh, you know, figure out and come up with a standard and in accordance to my own thought process and my own strength, I, I, I realized that, that if I just step back and just held on to God's grace and understand that it, that he's already given me all these abilities. All I need to do is just aggressively receive it. Yeah. And once I realized that, then it took the pressure off. And it put things, you know, just as Paul always saw things, it put things in the proper perspective. And so, uh, matter of fact, it, it, just, it, it just changed my whole perspective. Instead of me always trying to focus on how much I love God, what I started focusing on is how much he loves me. Yeah, you know, so, and that love compelled and helped me to not only grow in grace but to aggressively receive that grace, uh, and it, it it helped me to just to just you know focus on on him, his power within me instead of <laughs> me trying to generate all the power. So um, yeah, um, I hope that made sense. What I'm saying, it, it does make sense. I think what you're saying is is that. Um, as always defined, you get off of that religious roller coaster. You know, I got to please God. I got to do this. I got to read my Bible. And you know, those things are wonderful. But I believe it was Paul again, if I'm not mistaken, that says that uh, it's by grace that we're saved, not through works. Um, right. right. It, so it, it's crazy how this interview is lining up because I really like that because I was thinking to myself today, you know, how how essential, you know, God's grace is and how it's powerful in our life. And I had that same mindset that you had at one time where I felt like I wasn't doing enough or I wasn't praying enough or reading my Bible enough. You know, it, it affected my mental health. I always felt inadequate. You know, yeah, I always felt good. like, say it yeah. again. Um, a guilt conscious. <laughs> exactly. It was. It was guilt. And I kept saying, oh, it's, there's no condemnation to those who are. I kept saying that, but I didn't really believe it. I didn't yeah. believe it. it. It was written right there. I was like, there's no condemnation in Christ. But at the same time, <clears throat> I, I, did, I didn't really believe it. And then I started to, you know, tell myself that, no, it's not about performance. It's not. Those, like I said, those things are great. But we're not doing those things to obtain or even maintain God's grace. God's grace is just obvious in our lives. And sometimes we don't even recognize it. 
you know, like I, like I told you earlier, when certain events and things happen in our life, sometimes we uh, discredit God altogether. And, uh, and the things that's happened in my life, I just can't put myself in. And I respect everybody's views, but I just cannot put myself in a position to say that I am where I am at today. And I am who I am today, like Paul said, because of my own merits, if if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you know, and then um, uh, so one other thing that I can think about as well is um, I uh, I remember when I was writing some of my books, and uh, um, uh, and this is not to plug a book or anything like that, but I can think about the time where I was doing that, and I remember just having a, a, a writer's block. I mean, I I could just nothing was just flowing. And, I, and, you know, I, I couldn't really think about what to write at the time. And I just remember just just surrendering, not 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 trying to force it, not trying to think, you, you, you know, hard about it. But it, it was a time where I felt inadequate, that I felt that it was something that I needed to do, but I just didn't know how to do it. And the minute that I let go and stop trying to force things and stop trying to come up with my own energy or whatnot and just let go, that's when the, the Holy Spirit took over and, and things just began to flow out, you know? And it's like, I look at, at God's grace in that way of, of receiving his grace um, in a way to where it's just something where if, if, if you just let go and just live and uh, live life to the full in which he intended for us to do, and the things that 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 he doesn't intend for us to carry as a burden, they said that we should learn from him and put our yoke upon him, you mm -hmm. know. And and I think just really beginning to understand and receive grace aggressively helps you to do that. It helps you to uh, to receive life freely and fully. Now, um, am I saying meaning you can just go out and just live any kind of crazy way? Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. no, 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 thank no, you, no. Thank you for making that. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, that, saying that. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get so many people that they watch the show and like, Brother Henry is telling us, I, you know, you are an adult. I'm not, I have no influence in your, what you do in your personal life. Right. You know, and you know, Paul even talked about that too. You know, shall we continue and seeing that? That word grace, <laughs> right? And, and, and you know, honestly, I'm, that, glad, that, I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said that because yeah. some people think grace and power. I don't want to hurt anyone, and I don't believe God's grace empowers you to live a destructive life. Right. That's just my right. personal opinion. Yeah. And 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 you, you know what? It's, it's, it's like you would always hear the phrase of, uh, you know, well, are you talking about license to sin? No, no. I, I I think if you if you start focusing on 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 things such as that, then you're totally missing the understanding, our intent of God's grace. Mm -hmm. God's grace just gives you the freedom to to live and receive in the fullness. Mm -hmm of what Christ intended for his children, the fullness of him dying on the cross. That's what God's grace allows you to do. And that means that you living a life that is wholesome, mm -hmm. uh, you living a life where he gives you the freedom of choice. But because you understand what he did for you on the cross, man, it compels and moves you to live a life in which he's called us to live. That's what grace is, you know? Now, do do, do we sometimes uh, miss the mark or, 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 you know, fall short? Yeah. Yes, we do. But does that separate you from God's grace? No. Does that separate you from his love? No. What it should do is just compel you to say to, to still be strong in the grace, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and understand that you are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, you know, and that compels you to still continue to move forward and live a life worthy of the calling that you've been called to. And, and, and what and what you just said, you just defined grace unlimited. <laughs> and, and, and and you know, I I I think another point is that we we are 
whether you understand it or not, that we are ambassadors of Christ. You know, uh, one one of the awesome things that I can think about, Henry, is that in, in speaking in lines of being an ambassador of Christ. And I'm going to come at it from this angle. I remember like in, in the scripture, we talk about the Pharisees used to always be critical of Jesus because they said, you know, why you hang around all these sinners? You know, you're, mm-hmm. always, you're always around sinners and the street people per se. But it's like when I look at the scriptures in Jesus's life, uh, it's like the people are the people of of uh, the street people per se are or whatnot that they always hung around Jesus and Jesus hung around them because they viewed him as a safe place. They viewed him that they could be in his presence in his company. He could be in their presence and company, and they would not feel condemnation. Mm-hmm. Therefore, by them being in his presence and being around him and not feeling condemnation, it made them want what he has. Hmm. And for us to be called as being ambassadors of Christ, I think that is the the thing that we should focus on. Yeah. Is being ambassadors that you live a life of fullness, a life of grace, and where people see your life, they want what you have because they feel that, okay, this person's no condemnation of me. No condemnation of me, but the way that they live their life is completely different from mine, and so it makes me want to have what they have. It makes me want to stop and ask them, what is it that's different about you? Yeah. What? How, what? 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 What's the keys, the secrets to life that you found? You know? Yeah. And, and and just looking at the scripture, I see that that's what Jesus was able to do, and that's why people came to him. Wow, that's powerful. <clears throat> I think it's important that everything that Jesus was, you said, no condemnation. Uh, he was inclusive. He loved everyone. I feel like we should be in an embodiment of that in the I earth. Agree. And you know. You were talking about how Jesus interacted with sinners before we go to a close. Um, another thing I've noticed too is that if you look throughout the scriptures, Jesus' earthly ministry, I can't recall one person who had an interaction with him that didn't walk away changed. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I just the woman at the well. I mean, the one with the issue of like it keeps going. Like the, the the two blind men sitting by the wayside, they cried out. You know, Jesus could have kept walking. He, he I mean, um, and I believe Jesus is grace. Um, but I just think that's amazing how, like what you just said, how you know the Pharisees. Of course, they were very critical of him. Oh, I just thought about the woman with the uh, alabaster box. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, wash his feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. Oh, they really didn't like that. But um, it was materialistic. <laughs> exactly. And I believe that exists today too. And um and I feel like like you said, no matter who a person is or what they're doing or how they're living, I feel like if we just um allow grace to live through us effortlessly and not performance-based, people will look at your life and say there's something different about him or there's something different about her. And also, they could give you an opportunity uh, to share your heart, what that is. Mm-hmm. Well, well <clears throat> let's see. Um, I remember um, uh, when I became a Christian man, and uh, I remember being around some brothers and sisters and I remember just watching them, mm-hmm. and there were the, there was just things that I saw in their lives that uh, amazed me. I mean, one, they were happy. It's like two that that, that they were just they were just living life, you know. And uh, let's see, when when this came about for me, um, um, I was on, um, I was in college. And, uh, you know, um, I was met on a college campus. You know, when you you in college, there's a lot going on in college, you know. But it's like I saw where their lives, where they were in a college environment, but they weren't of the college environment. Hmm. 
you know, and, and just like you, he's, he's, he's calls to be in the world, but not of the world, yeah. you know, and it's like, I saw that in living proof and it just, it, it sparked my curiosity. It made me wonder, well, well what, what's so different about them? And it made me begin to want what they had because I what they were happy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I couldn't say that for myself at the time, you know, and then, and then, um, you know, just just going through that process and and and, and the journey, and then learning more about grace, and it, it's it's like I feel like, like like grace, learning about grace was the icing on the top. Yeah, you know, the, it it was the icing on the top and part of the glue that brought it all together. Where you you know where, where the scriptures speak of, of living life and living it living it more abundantly. And being free is like when you learned or when I learned about that, and all those pieces started to make sense. Yeah. And to begin to put it into practice and apply it to my life, not just on certain occasions, but every day. Yeah. You know, uh, I know part of that for me was was understanding that I am the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That was impactful for me. Mm -hmm understanding that scripture and uh it, it it was just impactful for for me uh because it helped to establish um my identity it's not my effort not myself but through jesus christ yeah you know well i tell you what i tell you that that is so amazing to hear that um i am who i am i am what i am because of the grace of god it is the grace of god at the end of that verse that goes with me everywhere we go. You know, the scripture says that the righteous is surrounded with a shield. And I thought that was quite interesting. And I was thinking about grace in that sense where, um, you know, danger may be around or uh, you may need provision or something. Uh, and it's like grace is everywhere. And grace means unmerited favor also. Right. Uh, the righteous surrounded with favor. Um, and I just think that's, I just think that's amazing. Uh, you, I know you don't want me to do this, but I'm going to do it. You did write a book <laughs> that surrounds this whole subject. And I just cannot interview mm -hmm. you about grace when you wrote mm -hmm. a whole book about grace. You came on the show in 2016, 2017, and I, I met you in person and we talked about mm -hmm. that. But there may be somebody that's watching um that may want to know a little bit about that book. So as we go to a close, can you do me a favor? Can you tell the people the name of your book? Uh, give a brief description of what it's about. And can you close us out in prayer? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah I've, I've actually written three books. Um, one book is um, 30 Days of God's uh, um, Amazing Grace. And that's a, a devotional. And the purpose of that book is just 30 days worth of lessons and stories uh, about the Bible um, that would help you to come into a better understanding of grace. Um, uh, the other book that I've written is um, uh, Think and Growing Grace. That's a very practical book that talks about real life experiences and uh, how to apply grace to your daily living. And uh, so you... Uh, uh, all of my books can be found on Amazon. So you just look up Lionel Sneed and uh, it'll, it'll um, you know, show some things about my books and, and whatnot. But I don't know. It's just it, it was definitely um, a joy writing the books because um, it just really focuses on how to live a life of grace, how to apply real life situations. You know, I. Um, I write about a lot of things that I went through and experienced um, as, a, as a husband, as a father, you know, just issues with faith, finances, everything. You can find those things in the book. Like, Just go to Amazon and look up Lionel Sneed and you'll find it there. So That's awesome. And uh, go order his book. Uh, can you give us a quick prayer right quick? Yeah, sure, sure. Absolutely. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this time together. Um, God, we praise you because you are worthy. Uh, uh, we praise you because you are Father and Lord. Uh, Father, I thank you for this moment to uh, spend the time with Henry. 
I pray, God, that uh, the things that were shared today, whether it be a lot or whether it be a little, that whomever hears it, uh, that it fits their spirit and that it gives them just what they need, not only to prosper, but to grow in strength and to grow in your grace every day. Father, I just pray that you uh, continue to be with Henry, uh, continue to be with his show. Father, that you would move mountains for him, God, that you would um, move people's heart to be on the show that need to be on the show, who are able to inspire and bring something, Father, that will help people to grow stronger in you and to grow stronger in your grace. I just thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Grace Unlimited. Grace Unlimited. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm going to ask everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Oh, um, wow. So go and subscribe. Henry Harris 100. Follow us on Soul TV. <laughs> well, uh, Perry, you are awesome. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank uh, you, and I appreciate you what you're doing too, buddy. Well, thank you. Because if you allow the world to define you, if you allow friends to define you, if you allow your spouse to define you or anybody to define you outside of how God sees you, that does open the door to rejection. God bless you. I, and I hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank you, Brother Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.